It's my pleasure, therefore, with your kind leave, my Lord, to request His Excellency, the Governor of Benue State, His Excellency Chief Samuel Otom, Governor of Benue State. Please put your hands together. One of the friends of River State. Please continue to clap for His Excellency until he takes the mic. Yes. Well, I have to go that side because the Bible says that when you come to a gathering like this, take the lower seat. If I took here and they told me to go there, then I will be ashamed of myself. Your Excellency, a very distinguished governor of River State, a brother and friend, a man with a passion for humanity, a man who is the voice for the voiceless, a man that cares, a man that fights and believes in justice, equity, and fairness. A presidential hopeful of our party, My brother, Nisi Wike, who appreciate the presidential aspirant and our colleague, Governor Odom, and my colleagues, my Lord, the CJN, and other lordships who are here. The chief celebrant and our mentor and husband, the chairman of the occasion, before our breach protocol, may I recognize the chairman and respect all protocols. I want to appreciate my colleagues for nominating Ming to stand on their behalf. They have been well recognized and appreciated for attending this occasion. And to appreciate God for our mother, our wife, our sister, and friend, Justice Mary Peter Odili, for this double celebration, retiring after over 40 years of service to our country, Nigeria, and celebrating 70th birthday. We thank God for your life. We appreciate God for our mentor, your husband, a great man of our time. And the two of you are best of the same feather. Any time I see any of you, whether together or separately, I see humility. And the Bible says, as a student of the Bible, when you humble yourself, you will be exalted. So I'm not surprised to see you attend the apex of your career in the legal profession and in the judiciary and also attending 70th birthday. The Bible also says that we shall leave three scores and ten, and that is 70. You have already attained 70 years, and by the grace of God, what you have contributed in the service of God and humanity, God will add more years to you until you desire to leave this world. want to appreciate all of you. We congratulate you, Mommy, and our Father. We congratulate you of you. And to say that we're here to celebrate you. On behalf of my colleagues, we celebrate you and thank God for your life. And pray that even at retirement, 
you are still looking very strong. And so, something happened in my community some time ago where somebody came from National State and was eating pounded yam with seven soups. So one madman came around and looked at this man eating seven soup and concluded that he needed to help him. And he attempted to go but he came back that he needs to help this man. He made the second attempt, went back, but the third attempt, he came and packed away six soup that this man was eating and left one for him and advised the man that be eating one soup so that when you die, they will know what has killed you. So, we want to appeal to our mother that now that you have retired, we are going to the other side. I wouldn't have said this when you were serving, but now that you have retired, we need credible poor people like you to join us in politics. And since our father is our mentor, someone who has distinguished himself in politics, we want to appeal to you to join him so that you can be a mother to all of us. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Put your hands together for His Excellency, the Governor of uh, Benway State. His Excellency Samuel Otom. Your Excellencies, my Lord, ladies and gentlemen, as the pilot will say, we are now taking our final descent. The unveiling and presentation of this book. If there is one event to which His Excellency the Governor of Rivertet has given full attention in the planning and execution, it is this program. And all of us on the committee virtually carry our hearts in our hand to make sure nothing goes wrong. And so far, so good. Some of you came here since on Friday and you see the security of River State. You see the ambience. We already received indication that some of you don't want to go back till tomorrow because that River State is the safest state in Nigeria. It's the most developed infrastructurally. And you are here to see for yourself. And one man, one visionary, one dreamer brings about all of what you are seeing here. Ladies and gentlemen, I seek you a round of applause as I invite His Excellency, the Governor of Governors, the hopeful, the hopeful candidate of the People Democratic Party to turn around this country like River State. His Excellency, Chief Nyesom Ezenwo Wike, CON, GSS ROS, Power of Sports Africa. Put your hands together for His Excellency. You are welcome, my Lord, Your Excellency. The problem we have in Nigeria is that nobody wants to leave office. Head of service, he forgets that by May 29th, when I'm leaving, he will also go. So all these praises and praises. Uh, you will go the day you will go. Your Excellencies, my dear brothers, governors that are here, your Excellency, the celebrant, and your dear husband, the chairman of today's occasion, my lords, justices of Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, High Court, Industrial Court, let me particularly recognize the Amy of Lafia and the chairman, Nasrawa Traditional Rules Council, the chief judge of the United States, Speaker and members of the civil senators, uh, they are traditional rulers led by the uh, chairman of traditional rulers council, 
my dear wife, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, the celebrant, let me make a complaint. Whoever prepared the, the documentary, I refuse to know that you are honored by this state as the single service star of River State. Please, when you are putting all the titles of Her Excellency, when you put Justice of Supreme Court, Commander of Federal Republic, also put the single service star of River State, DSSRS. And if you deliberately did not put it, you won't get. If you refuse to put it, whoever prepared it, I will not honor you. So better go and correct it so that I will honor you. It is not easy for people to be honored by their state. The husband is girl service star of River State. She is distinguished service star of River State. Your Excellency, if you look around, we stopped using this hall since last year, September. I said nobody will use this hall until Julius Berger finishes and the first person we will honor to use this hall will be your retirement because River State has a lot of respect for you. And so this is the first day we are using this building and because of the respect we have for you. Yesterday in the church, I was told to address the state. I said no. I will not address the state. Rather, I was given the opportunity to give vote of thanks on behalf of my mother. And so I gave vote of thanks. Today, I'm just to unveil the five books that have been compiled in her honor. So I'm here as the chief unveiler of those books. So don't expect me addressing the state. We have a state banquet today, and that is where the state will make statement. So what I'm going to do here is to unveil the books. But before I unveil the books, it gives me the opportunity to also make some contributions as regards the judiciary. Yesterday, I went to some of my colleagues to congratulate our father and the wife who is the celebrant. In congratulating them for a wonderful Thanksgiving and our inability to join them at home, I hinted to my mother I have said before, I have never called her my lord. I have always called her mommy. So, I'm going to say something that may be good, may not be good, depending on the way you look at it. On, on Thursday, during the validatory, the CJN spoke glowingly again in favor of the celebrant. The body of ventures. I mean, the Board of State Advocates also spoke, which was represented by Wale, a learning professional advocate of Nigeria, and made some issues, a race of issues, which are very fundamental. The president of the Jamba Association also spoke and raised some vital issues. The Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Malamin, spoke. The presentation was the permanent secretary and solicitor general of the Minister of Justice. Now, if you listen to what all they said, most of the problems were being centered on politicians. 
and there we have no right of reply. So now we have an opportunity. It is also good to put it on record. This is our own view. And so that when you go home, you look at all. You blame this, you blame this, you blame this, and you blame this. All of us, we all have, we all are problems of this country. We all are problems of this uh, country. It is not only politicians, it's not only executive, it is not only judiciary, it's not only legislature. So we must have to find a way, not when we gather, we begin to praise the judiciary during violatory section. And when it is time to take action to defend judiciary, nobody will be there to do it. So you give me an opportunity, just three minutes, three minutes, not much. Three minutes. Since they gave my colleague over three minutes, there are good women messages, three minutes. As a chief host, I should be giving more than three minutes. But but if you say that should be uh, equal, everybody should be equal, I will agree. But from the from what I've seen is like the audience have allowed me to take five minutes. So let me take five minutes. Let me welcome you to this event which have been put together to celebrate the launch of this book. Books written in honor of one of the best jurists in this country. And we're happy that whether you say state of origin is female, state of marriage is river state. That is their business. As far as we are concerned, it is river state. She's not going anywhere again. So, all those who are trying to take credit of state of origin, forget it. This is where she comes from. She's not going back uh, again. As already elaborated by the reviewer, these books capture the extraordinary lives, times, career, challenges, and accomplishments of former Justice Mary Audrey, who broke through glass ceilings and used her education and knowledge in law to serve River State as a First Lady to serve Nigeria and humanity. So much was said about her life, career, discipline, industry, personal integrity, high moral rectitude, and achievements during the validatory court section in Abuja on the 12th of May, 2022. Her brother, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, aptly described her as an epitome of jurisprudential finesse and an irrepressible voice in the temple of justice. End of quote. The relationship between her Justice Mary Audley and the family, myself and my wife, is a very long story which should be difficult to exhaust. I would therefore only concentrate on what I've said before in course of this to respond to some of the important statements made by Chief Wole Olodin Pegon, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Abuba Kabalami, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, and the President of the Nigerian Bar Association, Olumide Abata, regarding the depressing state of the judiciary in Nigeria. As the third arm of government, the judiciary is required to be independent and never to be bound howsoever to any person or authority other than our constitution in the discharge of its functions of adjudication and delivery of justice. Judicial officers are mandated to uphold the rule of law, protect fundamental rights, and dispense justice to all persons without fear or favor, ill will or affection. This is why every democratic nation craves for an independent and effective 
judiciary to advance the rule of law as an integral part of good governance. What is generally required is for the country to secure and strengthen the independence and autonomy of the judiciary and judges through constitutional guarantees and provisions on security of tenure, mode of appointment, and remuneration and well-being of judicial officers. The 1999 Constitution is not lacking on such fundamental guarantees, yet after over 20 years of democracy, the judiciary in Nigeria is generally perceived to be practically dependent, intimidated, ineffective, and easily given to corruption, pressures, and compromise. Accordingly, the problems and challenges of the Nigerian judiciary continue to be topical issues at every formal gathering of lawyers, judicial event, or discourse, and may remain so until lasting solutions are found to the deplorable state of our judiciary and the system of justice delivery. What then are the issues with our judiciary and justice delivery system? Where do we place responsibility and how do we resolve the recurrent issues as a nation so that Nigerians can have a judiciary they can be proud of and have confidence in the capacity of the largely inequitable system of justice delivery. While speaking for the body of senior advocates during the validated section, court section, in honor of my Lord Justice Mary Teacher Audley, Chief Wole Ololi Pekon, senior advocate, identified corruption as the bane of the Nigerian judiciary and pointed fingers of responsibility at politicians, lawyers, and the federal government. According to him, political cases are responsible for the tagging of the judiciary as supermarket, just as lawyers engage in despicable forum shopping to secure unmerited favorable court decisions while the current federal government is guilty of harassment of the judiciary. That is Wole's view. With due respect, the law national advocate is largely correct with respect to the issues of forum shopping by lawyers and intimidation of the courts by the federal government. But wrong in his allusion to political cases as responsible for the debasement of Nigerian courts. Like every other case, political cases are conducted before courts through lawyers who are professionally and ethically bound to denounce and reject the casting of any aspersions on judges by their clients. Now, if I be asked, are lawyers not behind the contentious criticisms of judges by clients? How many lawyers have withdrawn from political cases in protest against unwarranted castigation of the courts by clients? How many lawyers have withdrawn their services to clients on account of frivolous petitions against the court without their consent? Who are those who advise politicians to reach out to the judges? Where are the lawyers that have ever advised their clients against reaching out to judges handling their matters? A very good case in point, I went to Zamfara State. I came back around 7.30 in the night. Around 8 p.m., I tuned in AIT News. What did you see on the television? People were protesting, carrying leaves, telling the Chief Justice of Nigeria to warn the justices who sat on the matter between River State and Union State on national television. Now, who is the lawyer of those people? A senior advocate, a member of the body of the inner bar. What action did he take to protect the integrity of the judges and the court? 
So it is not enough. In every validatory section, in every occasion we find ourselves, we come to begin to pontificate. The problem is this. The problem is this. But you who is pontificating, what actions have you taken to make sure the court is being uh, protected? I, I, I would have thought that that senior advocate would have called his client to say, listen, if this is what I'm seeing, please come and take your file. I will not do this matter again. Then you can stand to say that politicians, people, castigate lawyers and this. Your clients are doing it. And you're a senior advocate, a member of the inner bar. And yet you're still defending the same people. So we should stop this attitude of validating session, body of senior advocates, MBA chairman, there you come, you talk and talk and talk. That is the end of the matter. Secondly, for me, let us stop this scapegoating and tell ourselves the home truth that as lawyers, most of us are involved in this despicable conduct, perpetrating the same evil only at different levels because of our predisposition for success through back doors without any regard to the damage we are doing to the reputation of the entire judicial system. Also speaking, along a similar theme at the same court session, the president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Olumidi Amata, blamed poor remuneration for judicial officers as a major challenge to judicial effectiveness, while the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Abu Kabalabese, commended the judiciary for contributing to the sustenance of democracy through its landmark judgment. There was nothing not surprising about these comments because it is usually fitting for such occasions for routine speakers to play to the gallery with their speeches. And so, the president of the NDA was merely playing to the gallery with his complaint about poor remuneration as a problem without making any viable recommendation on what he considers to be a reasonable paycheck for judicial officers. At any rate, as a member of the National Judicial Council, NGC, why can't the NBA president discourage the practice of allocating more judicial appointments by NGC to states with less capacity to cater to the well-being of judges and less number to the states with the wherewithal and commitment to do so? Let me explain this. We all know that as a member of NGC MBA, State A, you know State A very well. You know that it has always been said that State A cannot even pay salaries of workers. Now, why do you go and say allocate 10 judges for appointment? When you know that state cannot even provide ordinary housing for the judges. Then you allocate to me who has the commitment and who can give the houses you give me to. But you're a member of your NGC, MBA. Why not condemn it? You, are, you have an opportunity. Yeah, you won't do it. It's only during validatory section that all these things will come up. What is even worrisome on the part of President of India is his failure to admit that NBA, including the inner and outer bar, which it is, has failed in their responsibility to protect the rule of law and defend the judiciary from punitive intimidation and erosion of its independence by this federal government. By this federal government. Never in the history of Nigeria, even under the military, has judiciary been intimidated like the way they're intimidated by this federal government. Never in the history. So it is not enough for MBA to say we condemn. 
We are tired of condemnation. Every day, we NDA, we condemn this action taken. Go beyond condemnation and let the government know you are serious. You must protect the judiciary. So, may I come to address press conference? We, members of the INABA, we, members of the NDA, we condemn this attitude. It will not work. It will not, I'll tell you the solution how it will work. It is quite unfortunate that the NDA is only good at issuing statements of condemnation without more. Why the judiciary continue to suffer ferocious bouts of harassment from a federal government that has become notorious for its contemptuous attitude towards the rule of law and the rights of Nigerians to an effective justice delivery? We, let's not forget, in 2016, when the federal government unleashed premeditated midnight raids on judges' homes, including the late Justice Nguna of the Supreme Court, in Port Harcourt, Justice Lehman. The NDA only issued the usual tipping statements without any strong protest. In 2018, what was that in this country? Something that has never happened. It happened. It happened. What did the NBA do? Because we have brought ethnicity in Nigeria, we have brought religion into Nigeria, in everything we are doing, it is either you are from here or you are from here. If anything happens now, and I'm the president, and if you want to take an action that will affect the federal government, you see something say, well, you see, we have to be careful. You see, the president, you see, from our side. We are talking about Nigeria. We are not talking about where the president comes from. We are talking about what affects Nigeria and what to make Nigeria to be good, to be great. Nothing will happen. Nobody will talk. Or, you know, he's a Muslim. Or, he's a Christian. And then, all of us will not say anything. Then tomorrow you say, the problem, politicians. The problem, politicians. Every problem is politician. The politician is the head of court. Is the politician the head of court? I will come to that one. In 2020, when the Supreme Court gave judgment in Bayasa State, youth went to the South Adley House and blocked the gate. A panel of justices of the Supreme Court gave a judgment, simply the court that judgment is against a particular party, and people went to the God of the justice of the Supreme Court, who incidentally presided over the matter. What happened? What did MDA do? What did MDA do? What did the body of Sudan book uh, What did they do? Nothing. Mere statement. We condemn. We condemn. We are tired of their condemnation. Take action. We are tired. If we don't want to solve the problem of the country, let us say we don't want to solve the problem. And that is why people have the audacity to so go again to the same justice hall to even either to kidnap her or kill her. And I can tell you the truth. Assuming they succeeded, nothing would have happened. Nothing. All we said, we set up a full panel of inquiry to find out those who committed that atrocity when the person had died. What did the NBA do? In Pakistan, government took an action. The whole world has came, said no way, shut down the whole place. And government had no choice but to sit down to say, look, we can't continue this way. That is the way things are done. And we are just tired of this year. Every day, uh, we have an annual conference. We have this conference. I told them I will never attend any conference again because there's nothing to conference. Nothing to conference. What is that to conference? Nothing. The conference to some of us or to some of them 
is to have an opportunity to go out and tell their wives who we'll have conference. They will enjoy themselves. That is how the whole thing has been reduced to. So you don't go to go and take an action that look, this is what we are supposed to do. We cannot allow this government to continue to do what they are doing. If I was not around that night that he came to raid Justice Lima's house, and nobody knows anything could happen, and then maybe the man will kidnap, then they will say, look, we have told you so much insecurity rivers. Meanwhile, who are those who came to do that? Security agencies. Probably, if they have succeeded in kidnapping our mother or doing anything harm to her, you will say, oh, the level of insecurity in Abuja, everybody should be careful. Meanwhile, who are those who are doing this insecurity? Security agencies. Look at the story. Tell you left, tell you right. So, it is not proper. Ours should not be different, like what has happened in Pakistan. The NBA lockluster approach to social change is more of a disservice to the nation and exposes it to contempt as lawyers' body that stands for nothing noble. It must take a cue from the activist posture of the Pakistan Lawyers Association and get transformed into a formidably united social force for justice and the rule of law for you to be taken seriously as relevant elements in the Nigerian legal profession. As I said earlier, it was fitting for the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice to have commended the Nigerian judiciary. But this was a sharp hypocrisy, as the records show, that even the worst of military regimes did not subject the nation's judiciary to the horrifying and debasing experience of the present federal government. The question is, what have the federal government done to enhance and strengthen the independence of the judiciary and delivery of effective justice in the last seven years? What have they done to improve the working environment and service conditions of federal judicial officers? What have they done? Not to come to the validatory, to commend you for your judgment sustaining democracy. Yes, they have done that, but what have you done to improve on their independence? What have you done? for the working environment. So, you people too should stop accepting this. Uh, they come, they read, and they tell you how good you are. Let them not be coming there to tell you how good you are. They should go and put it in practice in order to accept you, to show this what they have done. Until it was struck down by the Supreme Court, what they could come up with was the infamous executive order 10, which they were to deploy to unlawfully seize state funds under the guise of enforcing financial autonomy for the judiciary at the level of the state. However, contrary to your posturing, Executive Order 10 was an instrument of blackmail against the states, and the Supreme Court was right and helpful in cancelling and throwing it into the dustbin of history because it would have caused more harm than good to the states judicial system. We should not also lose sight of the fact that the judiciary is also a problem to itself when it is weak and incapable of asserting and safeguarding its independence from the predatory tendencies of the other arms of government. When judges are lacking in courage and integrity, they easily give up to improper pressure, influence and control, and the entire judiciary suffers and retrogression when heads of courts fail to judiciously spend and account for funds released to them to fund their capital and overhead, I can tell you what happens. Heads of courts are giving money. Yes, the money may not be enough, but ask them too. The money you have been given, what have you used it for? What have you used it for? Yes, you, we, you blame government, we agree. We blame lawyers, we agree. You yourself, that you are the head of court, the one that has been made available to you, Tell us what you have done with it. No money can be enough. No money can be enough. But tell us. Because what the heads of God do? Because the judges, the staff, have no access to us. They tell you, you know, the executive have not released money. Then you continue to abuse us. It's not correct. 
Sometimes, in most cases, like in my own state, monies are released every month, every month, every month, every month. So if I go to a court, sometimes I sit in the house, I say, let me go to court. I go to court, and their condition is not working. I call the chief judge. Chief judge, uh, what's happening now? No air condition in that court. What about the money I'm releasing? He has to tell me. Some people say, why do you go to court? I say, I'm not going to court just to listen to cases. So I go and find out what they are doing with our money we are releasing to them. So, so you, why you are blaming the government too? You also blame your own self. Don't blame us politicians, politicians, politicians. The little one we have given, use it too. And people will see what you have uh, done with it. By and large, the problems of our judiciary and the solutions thereof are known. What is needed therefore is a leader with a political will, capacity, and courage to ensure that they are sustainably resolved and the judiciary strengthened and repositions to serve the best interests of the nation. Just as we have done in River State under my watch, I will respect and protect the independence of the federal judiciary as co-equal arm of government with the executive and legislature and give practical expression to its financial and administrative autonomies. If I'm given the charge by the grace of God to be the president in 2023. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Governor Otob is here. Uh, hold up. You have no opportunity to come and talk here. Don't, don't, it's, it's only me, so don't bother. So go and do your own retirement, then you can talk. So this is my own retirement. We will ensure prompt release of capital expenditures to the heads of court, but not without severe consequences for lack of transparency and accountability in the utilization of such funds, as those funds wanting will both be dismissed and assets acquired will sought to funds cease. As no government can truly address judicial corruption without first improving the conditions of service for judicial officers, the NJC should not appoint judges for states unless they have made provisions for decent houses with certificates of occupancy for all prospective judges. Because if you are appointing a judge, let the judge know this is my home and give the judge the certificate of uh, occupancy so that I can guarantee, give the judge confidence that I have a home to retire, I have shelter. Don't be, don't be approving. When this stage comes, we want five judges. I agree. Go and show all the houses and the CFO of such uh, judges. If not, do not approve any appointment for states who do not want to afford. Because we are how do you fight the corruption? How do you fight the corruption? Take for example, look at the look at the retired chief judge. A judge of the Supreme Court retiring. If God did not bless the husband, where is the home? Where is she going to? Where is the home? She's going to stay in the husband's house. Look at my wife. If she retires without me, which has? So you must. Because I can't understand how a justice of the Supreme Court will not have a home when he's retiring. How a judge of the Court of Appeal will not have a home when he's retiring. How a judge of High Court cannot have a home. Okay, go and fight the corruption. Go and fight the corruption. A permanent secretary, they have houses. Commissioners, they have houses, they build houses. Only a judge cannot have a house. No, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. And these are the things I expect. These are the things I expect the NBA to fight. Not to say we condemn. These are the things you should fight. Not uh, every day condemn, condemn. What are you condemning? Finally, I wish to commend the contributors to this book for their well researched works and the topical issues they so copiously and impressively address. Now it's my turn now to do the work I was told to come and do. 
The other one is just introduction. So I will invite all my colleagues and the celebrant and the husband, the chairman of the occasion, and the representative of the Supreme Court to come and join me, my dear wife, come and join me to unveil these books. Now, when they brought the invitation letter, the committee came and said, eh, it's not good for you to be the one. I said, eh, who would do it? Who would do it? He said, can't we invite another person? I said, look, God didn't make a mistake that I will be governor when she be retired. So I will do it by myself. I will do it. So I told them, go and wait for your own turn. When you become governor, let have the justice of Supreme Court or court of appeal that will retire when you are governor. Now I'm governor and she's retiring. Retiring at the time I'm going to be the president of uh, Nigeria. <laughs> how do you want me to how do you, so 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 on behalf of my friends, uh, my colleagues who have discussed before we came, my lord, what you and your husband have done for all of us who have served, there's nothing we can do that is enough. Nothing that we can do that is enough for you and your husband. So, and you can see how God works. Nobody has retired and have had this number of governors that came with. Unfortunately, you see how the good things are. See my good friends here. One, two, three, four, five. This one. This one. He's, he's supporting his uh, uncle. He's not supporting his uncle. This one. This one. President. <laughs> you know, so, so, on behalf of my friends, governors, we will unveil this book with a sum of 200 million naira. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for His Excellency, accompanied by their excellencies. And uh, His Excellency will be joined by his dear wife, the Honorable Justice Eberechi uh, Suzette Nyesonwike, and the celebrant, the Lord, the Honorable Justice Mary Peter Odili, and His Excellency, the former Governor, His Excellency, Sir Dr. Peter Odili, and the Chairman of this August event, Chief, the Honorable OCJ Okocha, MFR, SAN, for the unveiling and presentation of the book. To the glory, to the glory of God, on behalf of my colleagues, we unveil these five books compiled in honor of our mother, Justice Mary Ukego Peter Odile, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates.